Evening, everyone. Welcome to the final. I'm Brad Johansson. The Red Show signs of life in Milwaukee. David West signs on the dotted line in New Orleans. Follow the signs to Sparta for little NASCAR trucks at the Kentucky Speedway. And I was just thinking about Bob Boone and his job security. But first, time for the Reds to get off the snide. And, and where else to get well but in, in that place where everybody seems to love to go. The hapless Milwaukee Brewers, right? Right? Eh, maybe not. And on their current eight-game losing streak, the Red starters boast a gut-wrenching 0-7 record and ERA over 8. The carousel that is the Reds' four-man rotation lands on Ryan Dempster tonight. Dempster actually looking pretty good. Bases juice, though, in the fourth. Osik with the grounder to Boone. Steps on third. And he'll throw, throw to first. Out of the jam. Still scoreless in the sixth. Angelo Jimenez triples and Barry Larkin on the contact play. Jimenez dead at home, but Helms throws it away. Larkin to second. It's one zip Reds. Then Jose Guillen delivers again. Up the middle. Larkin will come plateward. It is two zip Reds. Then with Guillen aboard. Ken Griffey Jr. Ah, goodbye. His fourth homer in as many games. First time he's done that since 94. It's four zip Reds. Oh, time for the sausage race, and Jose Guillen's ready with a bat. Just kidding. He would be ready with a bat in the eighth, though. This one finds the left center gap. Larkin will score again. It's 5-1 Reds. Then Aaron Boone with another third. Excuse me. Sheets throwing it away. Guillen will go back to third tag. He will score 6-1 Reds. They break their eight-game losing streak. 6-1 is your final. Plenty of Reds talk coming up. Sunday night, Jim Bowden, he will join us on the Chrysler Dealer Sports Authority, a special all-star edition as the Reds' general manager will join us via satellite from Chicago. That's 11.35 Sunday night. The Reds finally find a team they can beat up on before the all-star break. No problem with the Milwaukee Brewers last night. And tonight, Ken Griffey Jr. does it again, leading the Reds to their second straight win. Let's go to Miller Park. And Jim Bowden looking for a fifth starter, perhaps. Work those phones, Jim. Reds threatening the first. Two on for Jr. But the line drive to second catches Barry Larkin off first double play. End of threat. Bottom of the first, Jimmy Haynes. Second pitch to Eric Young. Finds its way over the wall in left field. The Brewers jump out to a one nothing lead. But Haynes settles down after that lone mistake. Watch Keith Osick hit into the 5-4-3 double play. End of inning. Haynes allows only four hits over seven innings. That's his first win in a month. Now in the six, bases loaded. Two outs for Aaron Boone. Watch here. He pops it up. The catcher Osick can end the inning. But what happens? He bobbles the ball. It hits the backstop. No, no, no catch. So Boone stays in the batter's box and makes the Brewers pay. Issue Boone a walk. Larkin comes home. Game tied one apiece. The inning stays alive for Sean Casey, who delivers the two-out single. That scores Griffey and Guillen. Reds go on top three to one. Then in the seventh, Barry Larkin with the base hit that gets through the infield. Kelly Stinnett, come on home. The Reds lead this thing four to one. All that's left is for Junior to Homer for his fifth straight game, tying the franchise record set by Johnny Bench way back in 1972. Reds go on to win 5-1. to one. They look to sweep the Brewers tomorrow. And plenty of Reds talk coming up tomorrow night with Jim Bowden. He'll join us, as always, on the Chrysler Dealer Sports Authority, a special all-star edition as we bring you the Reds' general manager via satellite from Chicago. When a team's struggling like that, you definitely got to make changes. Uh, you know, it started in, in the beginning of the year with me and a couple other guys, a couple pitchers. Uh, they made some changes. They got in the groove. Uh, they have to make some more changes, obviously. Welcome back. Brandon Larson was part of the Reds' so-called Puerto Rican purge in April. He was sent to Louisville with pitchers Josias Manzanilla and Jimmy Anderson, and despite posting big numbers in AAA, has not returned to the big leagues. Dan Horde reports on a Louisville slugger who's wondering when he'll get another chance. How bad was Brandon Larson in April? He had as many errors as hits and batted 083 with four singles and 48 times up. That quickly ended the highly publicized switch of Aaron Boone to second base. Yeah, I just wasn't feeling right at the plate. Uh, I didn't play the last week and a half of spring training pretty much because I was nursing an injury. Um, my timing was off, you know, in the start of season. You know, the team was struggling, so I mean, a lot of things really, really focused on me struggling. And, you know, I came down here to basically find my swing. And uh, for the most part, I think I found it. That's an understatement. Larson set a Louisville record with a 26-game hitting streak and was recently named the International League's Player of the Month for June. 
but there's no logical spot to play him in Cincinnati now that Boone's back at third. I'm a third baseman. Uh, I've, I've, I've been playing there in this organization throughout my entire career at third. Um, I feel like I know that position well. They've tried me in other positions. Uh, I'm open to trying them, of course, if anything, to get back to the big leagues. But I feel more uh, suitable at third. Um, you know, Aaron's a great third baseman. Uh, he always has been. And, uh, you know, he's an all-star this year. So I'm more power to him and a lot of credit to him. He deserves it. Slugger Field in Louisville might be the best ballpark in the minor leagues, and the Bats lead their league in attendance. Still, it's not the big leagues. But Brandon Larson says he's not bitter about still being here. How could I be ticked off of the world, man? I'm, I'm, I'm playing baseball. You know, I'm playing a game. I'm doing things that, you know, most kids my age dream about doing. Uh, whether it's here, double A, A ball, the big leagues, uh, and still playing baseball, you still get to, you know, have the greatest job in the world. I, I can't be ticked off at that. Don't get the wrong idea. He's not content to stay in triple A, especially knowing that one bad month led many people to conclude he can't cut it in the big leagues. The, the, the weirdest part about baseball is, is picking up a newspaper and, and read a magazine and, and, and looking at what people are saying. I used to do that. I don't do it anymore. I mean, people are going to say what they want to say. They're going to believe what they want to believe. Um, all I can control is what I can do out in the field. And I have a lot of people that come up to me and said, man, it's really a, a joy watching you play baseball uh, in this stadium and in Cincinnati. Um, there's, there's other people that are the opposite way. And usually you don't meet those people that say those bad things about you. It's usually the good people that come up and tell you that, you know, how appreciative they are. All I can do is keep going out here every day and putting up some decent numbers, which I think I have and uh, you know, show them that maybe I deserve another shot. Sometimes you got to wonder about an organization that gets a guy that can't send to the minors, Willie Mo Pena. Park's another guy with those kind of numbers at AAA Louisville. Mm. On this night, it's a very special night. He's in Chicago, site of Tuesday's All-Star Game. Plus, we'll see if Brad whiffs or hits in his I've Got Next. But first, the Reds close out the first half of the season. The best way to beat the Reds is to build a huge lead on them, like the Houston Astros, who wound up whipping them 12-2 and 11-2 last week. But keep in mind, the Reds have come from behind in 22 victories before today. So with a measly six-run deficit against the Brewers, it was no time to panic. Let's go to Miller Park. The Reds continue to have problems in the first. Richie Sexton doubles in. Former Reds outfielder Brady Clark, Brew Crew on top, one to nothing. More trouble for Danny Graves. In the second, West Helms hits his 16th home run, leading off the inning for a 2 to nothing lead. Now Clark getting a rare start for All-Star. Jeff Jenkins goes deep in the third, just his second of the season, 20th allowed by Graves in 20 games, 5 to nothing after three. Jose Guillen gets the Reds on the board, banging a solo homer to right center in the fourth and makes it a 5-1 ball game. But Keith Ginter answers with a two-run shot in the bottom of the inning, and that puts Milwaukee up 7-1. The Reds overcome the six-run deficit, their biggest of the season, thanks in part to Sean Casey's 10th home run of the year. The Reds lead 8-7, bottom nine. But Richie Sexton smacks a two-out RBI single to center. That scores Scott Putsednik, and that's Scott Williamson's fifth blown save this season. Sean Casey singles with one out in the 12th. Aaron Boone, who had been 0-5, for 5, follows with his 16th homer to left. The Reds get the sweep. The Boone family can celebrate. Aaron now heads to the All-Star game with his brother Brett, the only family in history with four All-Stars. You know, we've been fortunate, and, and I know uh, my grandpa will be uh, like a kid in a candy store there. I know he'll be so proud. So, um, you know, it, it, we've been blessed and, and just fortunate to get the opportunity. Now for your central standings, heading into the All-Star break. The Astros have the edge, leading the Cards by one, Cubs by three. The Reds have to be fortunate. They are only six and a half out. Pirates seven and a half back, but still in it. The Brewers, well, they're in last place, 12 and a half games out of first. Now for the real scoop on the Reds. News and insight from the general manager. Is his job safe? Is Bob Boone's job safe? Let's get some answers as we welcome Jim Bowden for his weekly visit from the site of the All-Star Game in Chicago. Let's go to Brad for Bowden on baseball. General Manager Jim Bowden is in Chicago for the Futures game today, the All-Star Game on Tuesday. He joins us via satellite from WBBM in Chicago. Jim, thanks for joining us tonight. Always nice that you stop in, even when you're out of town. Well, it's nice to stop in, especially after you win three games in Milwaukee and heading to the All-Star break, six and a half games out, coming off a three-game sweep. All right, you're, you're, I'm telling you what the tabloids are saying, and you've seen everything that's gone on so far. You lose eight in a row before you go on this three streak, and everybody says the Reds are out of it. Are the Reds out of it going to the All-Star break, six and a half out? 
There's a lot of baseball to be played, Brad. Six and a half is nothing to overcome in this game. I remember growing up as a Red Sox fan, we were had about a 10-game lead the second week of August, and we ended up losing to the New York Yankees. So, no, six and a half games isn't a lot. Granted, we have to jump over three teams, which is a lot, and we have to play a lot better in the second half to get back in this thing and be contenders. Uh, right now, people are calling us pretenders, but you know what? If we can straighten some things out, get the starting pitching straightened out, get the ball club healthy, let Junior hit like he did this past week, we have a team that can come back in a hurry. We start with the Houston Astros after the break. You come in and have a good three out of four or four out of four, and all of a sudden you're right back in. It can happen that quick in this game. Are you going to tell us that you are a buyer then in this market right now and you are not a seller? Are you confirming that? Well, what we're trying to do is we're trying to continue to improve the team to win now and to win in the future both. We all know what our needs are, Brad. It's been starting pitching for about 10 years. It remains that. We continue to try to trade for that. And that's the main reason I'm in Chicago. It wasn't to watch Steve Smitherman homer and double in the Futures game today, which was a great show for the Cincinnati Reds prospect. It's not to see Aaron Brun play along with his brother Brett on Tuesday here in Chicago. We're here to try to get some pitching. All right, but if you're trying to get pitching, are you also, as you said, you know what, we're looking towards the Futures. Does that mean you're also a seller? Are you both a buyer and seller in the market right now? Well, Brad, as I said before, we're trying to win not just this year, but in the future. And if we can make trades that satisfy both the short and long-term goals, we're going to do that. There is talk that Jim Bowden does not have the power to fire Bob Boone should he need to do that right now. True or untrue? Right now, I'm the general manager of the team, so you know what power goes with that position. Yeah, well, I mean, can you clarify that? Have you been given the power by either John Allen? I'm, or... I'm the general manager, but right now Bob Boone's our manager. He's going to continue to turn this ball club around. We're coming off a great weekend as we go into the All-Star break, and, and we have faith there in Cincinnati. So do you believe that Bob will, will be the manager for the rest of the year then? Bob's the manager. You know, I, I get tired of hearing these questions, you know. All right. Uh, he's the manager. All right, and how about you? Your your contract is up at the end of the year. We haven't talked I'm about this too much. I'm the general manager, so... I'm the GM right now, Brad. That's that's my position. Do you, you want to stay in Cincinnati? All, once want. all right. When, Absolutely. You want to stay past this contract? Absolutely, I do. I want to stay here and uh, and win here in Cincinnati and win in Great American Ballpark. All right. You talked about Junior uh, coming back, and and we've talked for several weeks. Junior needs needs to be 100 percent. Well, he actually didn't look 100 percent yesterday, although he's hit. You know, until today, five homers in five consecutive games. First time he's done that since '94. Give me his health status. Well, I think his legs are a lot better, Brad. I think that the five home runs he hit this week showed that his legs are coming back, and that's a really good sign. He does have some problems with one of his feet, and he re-injured it on Saturday, but that's not a real big deal. It basically was a cause from a new pair of Nike shoes that he was trying to wear, but uh, he's going to be fine after the break. I'm really encouraged by the way he swung the bat especially his last couple of home runs, and I think you're going to see a big second half for Ken Griffey Jr. Okay, let's go to the four-man rotation. It's been talked about much ballyhooed, uh, maybe the problem of the eight-game losing streak. What is the status of the four-man rotation? Will it end now that we've hit the all-star break, and who will be the fifth man if you do that? Well, I think we'd all like to go to five-man. I think the best way to go to five-man is to see if the GM can make a deal. So let's see how I can do this week, and uh, that probably will determine if we go back to five. Okay. Uh, Ryan Dempster? Uh, he, he's one of those guys that you traded for during this time. Uh, he has been off and on. Uh, can you explain what the problem is with Ryan? Well, he's mostly been off and on very little. And when he is on, you all sit there and go, wow, like that game in Milwaukee when he's throwing 94 with a real nasty slider and just blew them away. And the, the players after the game are saying, can you believe the stuff that he had tonight? Uh, Ryan's potential is there. He's only 25 years old. Hopefully in the second half he gets more consistent and gets some more wins for us. God knows we need him. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with Jim Bowden in Chicago. More with the Reds general manager after this. Harvey, for right now, we'll send it back to you. Call 345-1212. Lines are open right now. We want to hear from you, please. And we'll have your results later in the show. Welcome back. Just because he's in Chicago, don't think we're letting Jim Bowden off that easily. More insight, more analysis on his team at the All-Star break. So let's rejoin Brad and Jim. Gentlemen. Back with Reds General Manager Jim Bowden, who joins us via satellite from WBBM in Chicago, where he watched the Futures game today. We're getting ready for the All-Star game on Tuesday, and let's talk about the All-Star game. First of all, let's talk about the Futures game before we get to the All-Stars. Is Smitherman the guy that you called up for a cup of coffee, and it was less than a cup of coffee? I think he got to pour it, and then he had to leave. Is this guy a guy that can play in the major leagues, and will he be on your expanded roster at the end of this year? Well, this guy definitely can swing the bat. He's at one of those long line of power bats that we've developed Austin Kearns, Adam Dunn are the two most recently, but this guy is a guy that 
everyone in baseball has been calling for. This is a guy with the potential to be a 325-35 home run guy, and he showed it today in the Futures game at uh, U.S. Cellular Field when he homered and doubled. Uh, he's got a lot of potential. Um, you know, he had a chance to win the Triple Crown last year in the California League, tore up the Double A League this year. Uh, we then brought him to the big leagues, and now he's back in AAA. But uh, I think that this is a guy that definitely could be ready by September, Brad. And, and if he's ready by September, where does he fill in with, uh, fit in with Willie Mopena, a guy that's been sitting on the bench and you didn't want him sitting on the bench? I don't know. We hope at some point that some of these guys get turned into starting pitching. That's what you hope. I mean, you keep stockpiling as much talent as you can and hope you can get a starting pitcher out of some of them. All right. Going for starting pitching. You say you're still in the market. Uh, Sidney Ponson still a possibility. You had uh, kind of poo-pooed a rumor that was out there last week about them looking for uh, one of your stars that you said was untouchable. Is he still available? Well, we'll have to see. I know the Baltimore's first choice is to try to sign Ponson. Uh, they're making every attempt right now to sign him. If they can't sign him, I think there's a chance by July 31st he's available. And are there other names out there? As you say, you've been in Chicago to try and talk. Is everybody talking? Yeah, we, go, go ahead. Yeah, we've had a lot of discussions with, with clubs about starting pitching. Uh, we have two or three deals we're working on right now, and we're hoping that at least one of the three can come to fruition uh, before we come home. That's what we're hoping for. All right, Aaron Boone, uh, kind of a nice way to walk into the All-Star game today with a... a a, an extra inning home run to send him there. Um, does it make any difference to have this going in? And, I, and one of the questions that I've asked, is it important for you to see somebody from every team in this All-Star game? I think it is. I mean, I think every city should be represented. I think the fans from all over the country want to see at least one member of their team represented. And I think that that's the way it should be, and I'm glad they're doing it that way. All right, D'Angelo Jimenez. Last week we talked about the deal. Brad, he is the 25th man on our roster, and then he goes out and starts a couple of games consecutively, and he just happens to be hitting 400. His on-base percentage is higher than that. What's the deal? Well, we're very excited about the week. As we said last week on your show here, that this is a guy that puts the ball in play, and he's always had a high on-base percentage, and that's one of the reasons we traded for him, is we wanted to have a guy that could put the ball in play. Uh, he's had a great week at second base, and. Uh, you know, I think he's going to make a good run at being our second baseman if he can continue to play the way he's played this week. But remember, it's only a week. Was it just a test? Because when he came up, you said, you know what, this doesn't have anything to do with Almedo, and basically it's put Almedo on the bench. Well, competition's a good thing. We all <laughs> love competition. That's how you win. Uh, you know, Dustin Mosley's been promoted to AAA. He goes out and has a great first start, seven innings, two runs. We've got the young kid, Wagner, who we drafted in June, through a shot inning uh, again yesterday at AAA. Uh, it's nice to have those guys sitting there in AAA competing with each other because that's what you want in this game. You want people looking over their shoulders and know that if they don't perform, someone's going to come up and take their job. Okay. You've had problems in AAA, even in finding arms to finish out that, that club out there. Is there anybody that you have moved up or is in AAA at this point that you believe can help you finish this year out? Well, yeah, we're watching uh, very closely. We're going to watch Wagner and Mosley's development. We continue to watch Jose Acevedo's development, uh, and we continue to watch Seth Etherton bounce back from the many surgeries he's had. So those are at least four guys that we're looking at uh, pretty closely and we'll continue to monitor. Okay, we've talked about it several weeks. Williamson with another blown save today. What's the status of your closer? Well, you know, Scotty hopefully uh, will continue to improve in the second half. He's got great stuff, and I think one of the big stories the last uh, couple of months coming into the All-Star break, though, has been Chris Rietzma, who's really becoming a dominant late-inning guy. He was one of the best pitchers in baseball in the month of June. He's pitched just as well in July, and um, he's going to be a guy that's going to make a run back there as well with Willie. But we have confidence in Willie, and hopefully Willie uh, will have fewer blown saves in the second half. And, of course, we have Reitzman developing uh, to help him out in case he struggles a little bit. But we have confidence that Willie's going to get the job done. Jim, i got 20 seconds. Stack up the division. Who's the team that you've got to beat? And then uh, follow him up after that with the three teams you've got to jump over. Well, I'm telling you, I think this division's real close. I mean, I think just after watching Houston, you've got to believe when they get Jeff Kent back with that potent lineup and the fact they've got Lidge, Dotel, and Wagner in the back end and, of course, Oswald and Miller in the rotation, I would think Houston right now a little bit of a favorite. The Cubs have the best starting pitching in the division. They're going to need another bat in the middle of the lineup. If they can make a trade, they're going to miss Corey Patterson. But if they can make a trade and get a couple of bats, they've got to be right up there with that starting pitching. And the Cardinals, if they can improve their bullpen a little bit, will be there. It's a division where every team has some holes, Brad. And I'll tell you what, if you get hot, any of the, any of the top four or five teams can actually win this thing. Jim, thanks very much for joining us from Chicago, taking time out of your schedule. I appreciate it. Enjoy the All-Star break. 
Well, I got my gentry suit on, and it's fun to be here at the studio at WBBM where Brent Musburger had so many great years here in Chicago. Jim, thanks very much. We'll talk to you later. Thank you, Brad. Harvey, for right now, we will send it back to you. And it's time to go inside the numbers. The Reds have recorded 29 of their 43 wins by two runs or fewer, including a major league leading 19 wins by one run, 10 wins by two runs. They lead the majors with 22 wins in their last at bat, including 10 extra inning victories. You made the call, now the results. We asked, should the Reds be buyers or sellers at the trade deadline? 59% say buy, buy, buy. Get that starting pitcher and make up those six and a half games. Thanks to all who phoned us tonight. Is, does the demotion of Ray Almeida mean there's a trade on the horizon? The infielder goes to double A as the Reds search for a fifth starter. They have till Thursday to promote one or deal for one. Evening, everyone. Jim Bowden may be on the verge of pulling off a deal because it leaked out that Brandon Larson is being called up tomorrow. The Reds did announce it, but Brandon did at the International Pacific All-Star Game, fueling speculation of a deal. Larson staying. The rumors were that Larson was going for the Devil Rays Victor Zambrano or Joe Kennedy pitchers, but indications tonight are that Larson's staying, and a pitching deal could be struck for another player as early as tomorrow. Larson's hit 324, 16 homers, 65 RBI for the Louisville Riverbats.